For Jacket Action News. I'm Luke McDaniel. And I'm Laura Gaskin. With the holiday season coming up, we have a lot in store for you today. We will take a look at celebrated winter holidays. We will revisit the outcome of this year's presidential election. An interesting story about Razorback Retrievers. And also, today, some very informative information about concussive injuries. For sports today, football season has come to an end, and here in the Delta, hunting season has begun. Basketball season is underway. I'm Laura Gaskin. And I'm Luke McDaniel. We'll be right back after this. Say you want to go on a trip, but you have no money. We all know that vacations take serious funds. What are you going to do? My advice would be save. First off, you're going to need a job. And since you probably only have time for a part-time job, there won't be much room for free spending. Name brand clothes? Those useless magazine subscriptions you never read? And that fire album that just dropped? Maybe things you want, but really don't need. And when saving, every penny counts. All of those things could have added up to a larger sum of money. $20 here and $20 there can $20 it to death. All for something that's not as glorious as that trip you'd go on. So cut the crap and save for that trip. You'll thank me later, and soon you'll be on your way to California. We've almost made it to our holiday break. Christmas, Kwanzaa, and Hanukkah, full of culture and tradition. Even though 92% of Wynn High School students celebrate Christmas, the winter months include several holidays, hence the saying, Happy Holidays. Kwanzaa, an African-American festival celebrated December 26th through January 1st. They celebrate their traditional values and cultural beliefs. This can also be celebrated with other holidays, for example, Christmas and Hanukkah. Kwanzaa was started in 1966 by Dr. Karinga, and it began as a holiday to celebrate um, African American heritage. Those who celebrate Kwanzaa highlight one of the seven principles from the Nguaza Saba and include that in everyday life. My favorite part about celebrating Kwanzaa is all the cultural um, aspects that it brings to our family. Abarakani, Umoja, Unity. The eight-day Jewish celebration known as Hanukkah revolves around the menorah. This holiday, also known as the miracle of the oil, has a tradition of using only a small amount of oil to represent the oil burned miraculously to light the temple after the Battle of Antonius. From those surveyed, most of Wynn High School students celebrate Christmas. They look forward to the Christmas season, opening presents, and spending time with family. I celebrate Christmas because my family celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ whenever he was born in the manger. And whenever the three magi and the shepherds brought him gifts to honor him, we just present gifts to each other. Stores all over get ready and decorate for Christmas. The holiday season only comes once a year, usually looked forward to by all. My favorite things to do around the holidays are probably decorating the tree with my family. Little kids flip through Christmas books while they wait for Santa's arrival. Winter Solstice, a celebration rarely mentioned in the South, celebrates when the Earth's axis tilts farthest from the sun. 
But the traditions go unrealized with other religious holidays. For example, Christmas trees and wreaths are both pagan and Christmas traditions. This season, as different holidays take place around the world, respect their culture, beliefs, and traditions. What do you celebrate? Happy Holidays. I'm Emily Hirons with Jacket Action News. Whether the Russians interfered or not, we now have a 45th American president. The differing views of the people lead to a divisive nation. On November 8th, the nation not only elected a Republican president, but also put Republicans in charge of the Senate with 51 and the House 239. CNN called this an electoral revolution. The American choice was difficult. Some of the candidates we have to choose from may not be our best, uh, our best choice that we feel like, but we still have to choose, you know, kind of the, the, the better of the two. It's been much more difficult than any election in my lifetime. Really believe that the Republican gentleman running is a dangerous and uh, unforgiving man who doesn't have much respect for very many people. Some of the worst candidates I've ever seen in a presidential election. Uh, and I know this is my first one, but I, I'm a student of history and I really like studying past ones. And there have definitely been some awful uh, candidates in the past. At the end of every presidential term, issues of finance, morals, and rights divide the nation, but most know where they stand before voting takes place. I think everything's at stake in this election are freedom, the freedom to. Um, be Americans as we've always understood it, you know, our right to vote, our right to be different, our right to uh, be respected whether we have differences or not. The greatest issue at stake is morals. Um, the country has strayed so far away from God, so far away from, you know, the beginning, and the further we get, the worse it's going to get, and it's not going to get any better. There's no man that can fix it. Stakes in this election brought many down to the wire on their decision and many remain silent on who they chose. I voted for Hillary Clinton. I'm a woman and I want to be treated with respect. I ended up voting for Evan McMullen. Uh, he, he seemed like someone who was very qualified for the position. He had military service, but he, was, uh, he just seemed to show, share many of my ideals. But me personally, I'm going to vote for the man that believes in what I believe in, and uh, I'll let you decide who I voted for. So, Some felt their candidate would have made a better impact. I think Clinton would have helped this country to prosper because she's a problem solver, and her experience in government and with her ability to compromise with the other parties involved in Congress and uh, in other areas of our federal government, she would have been able to enact the social and economical reforms that our country needed in order to, you know, move further into the 21st century. While others were just impressed with the political challenges and awareness. Well, this election was by far the most interesting election I've ever seen. Uh, and what I... What I really liked about it was that you learned so much about politics since pretty much everything, all the institutions, all the different parts of our government were either called into question or had a spotlight shined on them. So it really, it, I think it educated the public and also showed a lot of the gross stuff that happens under the surface that I think the public should be more aware of. Beginning in 2017, if the president-elect Trump experienced success, so will our nation. I'm Jake Andrews with Jacket Action News. As duck season comes in, more and more dogs are being trained in the Delta. With a booming sport of duck hunting and starting out with the story of a small boy and his dog, Troy Williams, a first class trainer in Vandale, Arkansas. <laughs> Well, it's a classic story of a boy and a dog. Um, I got a dog about 15 years ago and I wanted him to be good, so I studied and studied and chased down the information, how to teach him, how to, how to progress him and advance him into retrieving training. And um, 
He was an exceptional dog, achieving hunt retriever champion status at just over a year old, master hunter by two, and qualified all age retriever in the field trial game by two and a half, three years old. Um, the structure and routine is real important for dogs. They have to expect to be fed at the same time, put up for the day at the same time, get out in the morning at the same time. Uh, our routine basically is uh, out, to, out the door at seven in the morning and all the dogs do their business and get to exercise and run around. Um, they get fresh water, load the truck, and we go to the field. We usually throw a set of marks to be land or water or a combination of both. And, um, and we'll eat lunch and we'll do all our basic work, which is obedience, um, teaching them to hold things, fetch and hold, teach them to hold in their mouth, and um, all the fundamental stuff that goes into uh, getting a retriever to work with you and cooperate with you. We have a very successful track record for um, in the competitive games, and um, we train about 24 dogs a day. Uh, we have excellent facilities. If you hadn't already looked around, our kennels are top notch, our property is top notch, and um, we have everything we need here on the property to really progress a dog. Um, and we also network around the county and into St. Francis County training as well. So we have large numbers of places to train that are real close. We don't spend much time driving around the vehicle. Uh, we spend more of our time actually working dogs. This is June Carter Cash Clegg. She was a year old September 11th. Um, she went to Troy's Razorback Retrievers in March, I think, been there all summer. And she's a different dog than when I took her. We really did a good job with her in, in training her. She is high energy, real athletic, probably not the best pet, but she's a working dog and, and she's a go-getter. He takes care of his dogs. His facilities are real clean. Um, very professional. Like I said, she's high energy, real athletic. She was over my head in training her uh, because she's so high energy. And, and that's what you want because uh, you can't put energy in them, but you gotta have somebody that knows what they're doing training a dog that that's, that is so fired up and high energy like that. And Troy, Troy's done a really good job with her. Here at Razorback Retrievers, a first class training facility, Troy Williams can hook you up with your pup. I'm Jackson McClintock with Jacket Action News. More than 60% of high school athletes in their high school career experience concussive injuries. TBIs, or traumatic brain injury caused by a blow to the head, affects the brain cells and how they function, making concussions dangerously severe. More than 60% of high school athletes in their high school career experience concussive injuries. Athletic trainer Octavia Robinson tells more about the severeness of these injuries. First thing I look for are the symptoms. In fact, I ask what type of symptoms they're having, like how they're feeling, um, what exactly is hurting, and uh, any other problems that they may have. After I suspect a concussion with an athlete, I will take them through different tests. I will test their memory, their balance, their eye tracking, um, and just general questions to see where they are at that moment. Uh, they must be treated safely because the effects of concussion can last um, for a lifetime if it's not treated um, correctly. Uh, they can also, it can lead to sudden second impact syndrome which can lead to death if it's not caught and they're return to play too soon. 268,000 traumatic brain injuries happen annually due to car accidents. Well, it was nighttime and me and my brother were coming out of, we were getting out of our youth group and my parents were at somebody at a friend's house and we decided to go walk home and I was running and he crossed the road and right after that like all I know is I just see headlights and they're like blackout and then I wake up and there were like paramedics and like just people and I, I didn't know what was going on so. Well, I mean, concussions are not fun, and recovery, I just recommend a lot of rest. And Steps to recovery are very important. Always take precautions. I'm Jason Tom with Jacket, Action News. Hello, in high school. I'm Jackson McClintock. And I'm Mia Noll. It's time for sports. Football ends our season as state runner-up with a record of 13-1. Basketball tips off. And a yearly tradition of hunting starts in the Delta. We will be back with sports after this.
the Northeast Arkansas DOT headquarters. So we fix her aches and pains too. Come see us at the Scarborough Clinic. We'll get you in and out. While making it to week 14, undefeated, the Yellow Jackets fall short in their last game. Win suffered more mistakes in the state game than any other game this season. Well, the game against uh, the state game compared to games in the past, uh, we, we had some rain in there, but we, we didn't want that to affect us that much, and so we, we practiced with rain and stuff, with water on our balls and all that. But, um... We just we put the ball on the ground too much. We we put we had way too many turnovers for a winning team to have. And when you put the ball on the ground that much, you're not get, putting yourself in the situation to win. And so that was one of our main problems with the game. Hard work on and off the field helped Corbin Arnold earn the Brandon Burlesworth Player of the Game. Uh, I pr I prepared for the Brandon Burlesworth Foundation 5A Player of the Game award by a. Uh, Coming in every day, working hard, making sure I did every rep in the weight room, making sure I did every rep out of practice to the best I, best ability I could. And I just learned as much as I could when I took over at defensive end and learned all the plays and just made sure I executed well on each play and just went out there and worked hard. Being beat by a team with wins offense earlier in the season helped PA prepare for the state game. The difference between the state game and all of our other regular games were that we had seven turnovers, whereas in our other games we kept our turnovers to a minimum, and a turnover is a big momentum swing in a game. And also I think that PA had a good game plan for us, and they earlier in the year they played a team that played the triple option, and I think that helped them play us, and I think that's what was the difference between the games. We will continue to see hard work getting ready for next season. Um, I don't think anything will be too much different. We'll continue doing what we do. Nothing changes. Um, we may implement a couple more plays, but as far as anything we'll do, we'll keep continue working hard in the off season and training. In Arkansas, hunting is not just a sport. It's a way of life. The wintertime in Arkansas brings a lot of things, but the big one is hunting. Deer hunting, a major role of the outdoors in Arkansas. It takes a toll on hunters every year. Like being out in the woods, peace, quiet, great time, thinking about stuff. I think uh, deer hunting brings. Just a bunch of stuff to Arkansas. We ain't one of the top states in deer hunting, but I mean, we do have some deer. And it's just something that we like to do around here. Oh, it just brings a culture that everybody, I mean, everybody likes deer hunt. The Yellow Jacket kicker manages more than just an extra point on the field. You all have enough prizes? The Yellow Jacket scored a total of 684 points this year. 76 of those points for PATs and field goals combined. For the kicker, each extra point could make or break a game. 
Vernon Yoakum this year contributed to both his love of football and music almost at the same time and the same place, but it wasn't easy. Yoakum, never really having a reputation in playing football, he seems to do well at impressing his peers with his ability to step up and do his best. Well, you know, he, uh, we lost our kicker last year, Bo. You know, he was a three-season starter, uh, holds a couple records here at Wynn. And uh, so for coming in and filling in for Bo's shoes, which are some big shoes to fill, Brandon did really good. And to be playing band at the same time, you know, having two different activities to focus on and uh, make sure he's excelling at, is, that's very impressive. Although it seems difficult, Brennan managed to make ends meet between football and band on Friday nights. Every day at band practice, we would go outside and we would learn a new set. And then after we got that set figured out around 2.45, he would go and he would kick field goals. And then during halftime shows, he would come off the field and we'd have to take his tenors down on the field. And he would put them on and he wouldn't change or nothing. He would go straight out on the field and after that, close back on and he was ready to go. Juggling between these two activities that are majorly associated with each other, Brennan Yoakum impressively makes it work out while excelling in both band and football. Shared with only a few in WHS history, Yoakum prides himself with his unique contributions to two very involved and complicated activities at Wynn High School. With the band finishing fifth in state and the Wynn Yellow Jackets going all the way to the state championship. This year in Cross County, we've witnessed a very warm fall, but cooler weather is finally moving in with a current temperature of 39 degrees. Let's take a look at the five-day forecast. Today, it's cloudy with a high of 43 and a low of 40. Tomorrow, we have a high of 57 and a low of 26 with a 60% chance of scattered thunderstorms which makes for the perfect weather to stay inside and study for your semester test. Now the next three days are all mostly sunny. Sunday we have a high of 37 and a low of 24. Monday we have a high of 34 and a low of 26. And Tuesday we have a high of 40 and a low of 31. That's all we have for weather today. I hope everyone has a great break and a very Merry Christmas. I'm Caitlin Headley with Jacket Weather. We would like to congratulate the boys basketball team on their successes in the Bentonville tournament and on their victory over Four City this month. We look forward to bringing conference games to you live on DeltaSwarm.com after Christmas. I'm Mia Noel. And I'm Jackson McClintock with sports. That's all for the news. Good luck on the rest of your exams. Don't forget the mission statement of WHS ensures that all students will learn at their maximum potential. And every graduate of the Wynn School District will leave prepared for success in the 21st century. Wynn Public Schools equals excellence for success. I'm Laura Gaskin. And I'm Luke McDaniel. Happy Holidays. <laughs> Yeah. 